we're discussing entirely something different. Of course, we talked about the insecurity, talked about the uh, winning the war and winning the peace with a peace expert, talking about Mr. Sami Ihejurika. Well, we're still on that. In Nigeria, often, we're meant to understand in a year you hear this is what billions, you got me right, billions, billions of that are lost. And lives, most that can be, no life lost can burn. Lives lost in fire incident from the north to the south, from the east to the west, in market, in residential areas, filling stations. I mean, even on highways, just a little flick of fire about due to two cars hitting each other could lead to the whole car being consumed by fire. So today, do we actually have a national fire code? You will be acting. What are the laws, guys? I mean, what are the laws around this? Uh, you will want to know. And are they actually being implemented? How many fire service personnel do we have in Nigeria? Climbs, every emergency, you see paramedics, you see the fire service. I mean, fire service, uh, paramedics, and other professionals are even integrated into the fire service. But in our climb, uh, I very much doubt if we have that. That is what we shall be looking at this morning. The name remains Abdul Aziz Ahmed Kader. Welcome you to the program. Our guest is already seated in the studio. He is a safety expert. Well, if you say fire expert, you will be right. He is Muhammad Lowell. Good to have you here with us. Sir. Thank you very much. All right. Well, I think we'll start from the issue of even laws regarding uh, fire. Yes. Uh, we know we have the fire service, just mm -hmm. like we have is the civil defense, the army, and what if you things like that. Yes, yes. But we have, you can actually call a national fire code or fire law. Yes, uh, we do have statutory laws okay. governing the fire services. Okay. Uh, the recent as year 2007, the federal government has reviewed such laws. Such laws to cover various aspects of our lives. You know, over the years, there have been changes in demographics. There are so many industries around schools, markets, and so on. So there was a need to upgrade such laws. Okay. They are where? Okay. There are, they are, they are, they are those laws. The, the, the fire service was established around uh, 1960, uh, 1963 or thereabout. I mean, between then and now, uh, can we say these laws have been reviewed? Um, they have been reviewed. Okay. But the problem is implementation of such laws. Okay. The past six decades, hmm. there are many governments in the nation, with the exception of a few, who have been complacent in executing such laws. Okay. They only come to light when you have disasters. Then you hear the government talking about uh, the need for such laws. But the, the laws are just okay. How, how recent? Because we, we see laws that virtually every 10 years are tempered with. Considering our population explosion, considering the way we see settlement, the kind of we are having, yes. uh, how recent can we say the Nigerian fire law uh, have been? Uh, they were reviewed in the year 2000. That is the federal okay, statutory laws. Okay. But there is also the need for state governments to enact bylaws okay. that will govern. You know, each state has its own peculiarities. Yeah, yeah. So there are need. There are needs to repeal old laws. Okay. Enact new ones with the realities of with the, the realities of, of the situation the of the modern world okay but like this the communal state for example i haven't had any information to the regard that they have received such laws in fact over the years i have been advocating to the government to review such laws to take care of to take care of new developments okay when we talk about this for you because 
we know the first responsibility of every government is the protection of life and property. And property exactly. Every other thing, like we say in local palace, is Jara. Yes. <laughs> one will say. Yes. And one will have thought that the issue of fire and safety should have been at least the first thing every government will tackle. Exactly. But can we actually say that is what we see today? No. No. And why is that so? Well, like I said, previous governments, hmm. they have not given priorities, the right priorities to the area of fire protection okay. and fire services. On daily basis, you know as Kaduna and Metropolis, they have only one single fire station. And I mean, and this metro keep as part that it will take you seven, eight hours can, to go around. Can, cannot even cater to the needs of the place where it is domiciled. Oh, oh, in other climes. I see when there's, there are emergency situations, sometimes it's just rescue, sometimes it's paramedics, sometimes, I mean various, sometimes it has to do with even legal issues and what have you, yes. and people say the fire service, but in our climb, I don't think that is what we have, ideally, why is it so? Ideally, yeah. the fire service is an all-encompassing, okay. it's all-encompassing. It comprises the firefighting crew, it comprises fire prevention, the emergency services, the league, they have their own department, water supply system, and so many other departments incorporated within it that cutters to the league, including the, the, the health, okay, health personnel. Okay. Health personnel. Mm. Because in any fire situation that they are called, there must be the firefighting crew, okay. the water tanker following it, the emergency vehicle or rescue vehicle, mm -hmm. and the ambulance, and of course the police. Why are we having all these segments? Yes, because this is very, very essential mm. in mitigating any fire out of emergency. So what is the role of these people you've listed in an in, in emergency situation? You see, the, the firefighting crew, they are solely to fight the fire. The fire, okay. And within them, they take care of the place where the fire is burning and the adjacent areas. Okay. And then there are people who do salvage duties okay, on okay. the fire ground. Okay. And uh, the the re, uh, emergency or rescue uh, services, they rescue people because the first thing is saving life in any fire situation. Mm -hmm. When you go, if there are people within the building, they need to be rescued first. And those nurses or the health services, they are on standby to render their first aid services before those people are conveyed. To, okay. to the hospital. Okay. Those are the services. Okay. Why do we need a police? To the police. Of, the hmm. police obviously is to control the crowd. Okay, crowd control. Because crowd, the, the crowd become a rule in any fire outbreak. Yeah, especially in a climb like ours. Out like ours. Hmm. So they 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 monitor the crowd to stop people from invading your incursion from incursion within the area and to prevent any criminal uh, miscreants from stealing people's properties because uh, uh, some are opportunists yeah. when they, they see a situation your... like that yeah. they go ahead and perpetrate their that's the role of the police okay in an emergency this is a situation in a situation but, but, but let's even look at the fire service as it is today in nigeria uh, it seems to be centralized like you said state are supposed to have bylaws that should create uh, state fire services mm. that should take care of the various peculiarities we yes. have. But now we even see regions. We are having the operation Amoteku, for instance, mm -hmm. in the southwest. Yes. And nobody is talking about how can we actually have a central firefighting system that can. Uh, I, I pass through Abuja sometimes and I wonder if there should be a fire incident at certain highly dense, densely populated area, what the result could be uh, at the end of the day. Exactly. As the fire service is today, can we say they are even equipped 
materially, personnel-wise, to actually even take care of the minimum fire outbreak or emergency situation? They are not. Uh, there are about eight points. One, legislation. Okay, the law itself. The law itself. Mm. Like I said earlier, mm. there is need to enact bylaws mm. uh, to, to govern the standards, mm. the, the standards of uh, uh, buildings, for example. Or well, the, the structures the, itself. The structures Before itself. you erect any structure. The structures have to be safe. Okay. Because it's people. Mm. Those are high density structures, structures. like office buildings, mm. uh, schools, uh, markets, filling stations. There ought to be regulation, building codes, for example. Okay. You cannot build a multi story building mm. without incorporating the safety features from the design stage. Mm. It's very, very essential. So the fire service needs to be part of even urban development for instance. Exactly. Because before you are given permit to build any structure, be it filling station or office building or even schools, okay, you need to take your architectural working drawings to the fire department. They will study it and make recommendations okay. as to the safety features like fixed installation, like uh, fire extinguishers within the building, like uh, fire sp 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 uh, sprinklers, uh, fire detectors, smoke detectors or heat detectors. They have to be in place before you go ahead and be granted permit to build. To build. I don't think we have this in any part of Nigeria. Uh, we do. Okay. In we like do. which Can states? Kano state. Okay, Kano state. Kano state. Okay. Kano state. Okay. You cannot build any high density structure if you don't have a fire certificate. The fire department, they will review the architectural working drawings of your building whatever it is, and they make recommendations Okay. what you need to fix. Just like the urban development uh, unit exactly. of the state government. Yes, they will do that. And then after the structure is built, they are responsible for inspection to see that those recommendations are followed to the latter. If they are not, the counterpart of Subda, Iruna they, they, they will not give you to build that structure. structure because it is people you are going to put in there they are I, 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 because i'm just wondering if for instance uh, federal capital development authority actually take those kind of things into consideration as densely populated as abuja is becoming for instance in abuja like in kaduna mm. there is need for more fire station just just like you have in kano seems to of this yes because within, i say situation metropolis, yes there are at least nine fire stations within the metropolis within the metropolis and all the 44 local governments of Kano state mm -hmm. they have fire station functional fire functional stations. equipped well-trained personnel well you're talking from experience because i say situation where someone falls into a well they call the fire service yes not like what we see in some places and some people end up try to rescue somebody and end up uh, in, it, in it. Can you tell us a bit about that? I mean, because you talked about rescue. Yes, that's, that's where the rescue department or section of the fire station comes into play. Okay. The this personnel, time it's not about a fire extinguishing no, or rescue. Rescue. Okay. The, the personnel there are well trained. They are equipped with breathing apparatus. Okay and other inputs that assist them, like the ropes, the lines, to go to go into the well. Okay. Or the pond. Or they are highly trained. They will come. They will put on their face mask, an oxygen cylinder, and then they will get in. They have a system of communication okay. when going in. They will go in and successfully rescue person, whether dead or alive, if they need to bring that person uh, out. They even tend to accidents. The emergency services of the fire department. 
of their services, the rescue services. Uh, even in Lagos, I don't think we have that. Because we see people jump into the lagoon. The next thing is we have to look for local divers to save them. And one will have taught a place like Lagos, show, I believe, riverine areas. The even. fire department mm -hmm. is saddled with that responsibility. responsibility. They must have a services unit, rescue unit, rescue unit, to attend to accidents and to cases of uh, drowning. Highly trained. What? You talked about seven stages. You talked about the law itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The law itself. Okay. Then the next most essential thing, water supply. Okay. There is total inadequacy of water supply. Well, you talked about water supply because it's still on water supplies. When we were younger, we see fire service go out to extinguish fire somewhere. And at the end of the day, they don't need to, today what we see is a situation where they are out of water, they have to drive kilometers away with options way to go and get water and what have you come back to that. But in those days we used to have is it water water hydrants? Water hydrant, yes. Along highways yes. where all they have to do is just open the roads. Exactly. Hmm. Kaduna as an example. Yeah. There are provisions in place okay. of fire hydrants all over the place. But unfortunately, over the years, because of lack of supply of water, water. adequate water, yeah. they have dried up. They okay. are not functioning. Function. Some have even been covered by dirt. You yeah. cannot you cannot even know this place. There was a water there, hydrant. There, there. Uh, water hydrant there. But, but, but even at that, because I see some road being reconstructed today. And uh, such even openings are completely sealed. Sealed completely. So nobody is even thinking that oh, we we have something we here have something there. that is meant for protection exactly. of lives and, and, and property. Exactly. That is to make life better. In, so in construction of new roads, all those things. In 1984, yeah, new fire hydrants were constructed in some new developing areas, areas. of Kaduna. Yeah, Kotsi One and Bank. It, it includes uh, as Kolai area down. Gom there are fire hydrants, but they are functioning. So we don't have adequate water supply. That is, you find that if they are called for fire at Kyle, yeah. the water finishes. They would have to go to wherever they think they can get can water, water, no matter how far it is. I'm From right. that time till then. So there is need in Kaduna to audit all those fire hydrants. Other urban urban center. urban center across Nigeria. And there are proposals now for new development areas like the Millennium City and so on. Yeah. Those are the first thing that should that be, should be in place. Okay. All the utilities, the domestic water supply system, the fire service water system, electricity, and what have you, must be in place before people start developing in those areas. But even the existing areas, they are not functional. So there must, we must revisit the water supply. Okay. So enabling law, water supply water system. Water supply system. Okay. That's and true. then fire stations. Okay. It's all. From one to at least about nine. Must have one Rigasa, Ngo Mazu, television. So few kilometers south, in between each in other. In between. So that if there is any fire incident in any location mm. and they have made an assessment that they may require assistance, they needn't have to go back no. and in back and forth. The adjacent areas will quickly come and bring, yeah, Give bring assistance. Okay. Bring backup. But the situation as it is now, any disaster, sorry, the only assistance you get in Kaduna is from Kaduna refinery. And I remember previously, I don't know whether it is still functional, the Kaduna Polytechnic Fire Service. Fire service. And the NTI. Yeah, NTI was, NTI was rough, yes. I mean, refurbished now. Yes, and we uh, had a private individual yeah. who made his own fire station. 
he used to be rendering humanitarian services. But it was jeopardized because his staff, whenever they went for fire services, just like the state fire services, people attacked them. They would give them a chance to do their job because of ignorance. On the part of the part of the populace. Mm. And that brings me to the next point. Mm. There must be a fire prevention department okay. which is saddled for everything of those laws. Okay. Ensuring that those laws are adhered to, are followed to the letter. Okay. They do that by periodic inspection of any building or where people are, are, are performing their, their commercial activities. And another function is public enlightenment and education. Public enlightenment and education is very, very essential. So within the fire service, you need an enforcement unit that enforces this law exactly. itself. Exactly. Not just when there is fire outbreak, no. you rush down there. No. Wow. The key is fire prevention. Outbreak, okay. To, uh, to, to start, to prevent them is most okay. It is only as the last resort when the fire occurs that you see them turning out to go and put out the fires. Okay. So the fire prevention department takes care of that education and enlightenment, inspection of factories of schools to ensure that the laws governing fire safety regulations are adhered to and this they do it periodically year round 365 five days. days they do that to ensure where people uh, gas plants mm. including schools one would even, why schools um, I, I, in other climbs i see some amusement park um playgrounds you have firefighting personnel and equipment stationed there. Anywhere where there are people. Okay. That's what I call high density areas. Where there are people. You must think of their safety. You must think of protecting people's property. So provision must be made in case if there is any fire outbreak. Mm. You need to do that. The fire prevention department is saddled with that responsibility. And they go around to industry schools for, for public lectures. To people faced yeah. aid firefighting. Mm. It's their responsibility. Well, probably maybe when we but before the break, the issue of the number of personnel. We talked about policing, for instance. Mm. We recruit police. Yes. We have, I mean, uh, uh, police academies that train. Uh, police personnel before they are even let loose into the society and what they view. In the case of fire service, can we say the same thing? Is the next item okay. on my agenda. Hmm. Provision fire training school, school. Okay. or fire college. Kano State, they have a fire training school. Kano seems to be leading from what we... In the north here, okay. Number State is another state that I know they are doing very well. Okay. And the government there are really, really giving them all the support they need. For your state, we used to train firemen in Ibadan before, okay. Okay. before Kano. You see, there is need for a fire training school in Kaduna. Abuja does not I don't in, think Abuja has no, a fire no, training school. It doesn't. In addition to the more number of fire stations to be provided. And then the issue of communication too. Oh. Communication is very essential. We must bring the fire services up to date into the modern world in terms of communication. They are walkie talkies. The control center oh. must be up to date because the key to success in any fire operation is communication. communication. Okay. When you relay the communication clearly, precise, and understandable, you will be successful in carrying out your operation. Mm. But this is not what it's difficult now to call the 
station. No. It's difficult for them to respond. And communication also is part of the, it, 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 them going to the location mm. successfully. People are ignorant of the importance of their services. When there is fire, people hardly give way on the road. No. People hardly give way on the road. But again, you blame them. We have politicians now running around with sirens in convoys, <laughs> beating traffic lights, and what have you. Something that we should actually it should be the emergency emergency yes. uh, services that yes. should be doing that. Yes, is the hotline mark of the program dialogue reaching you from the tables of Liberty Television, Voice for All, and Vision for All. And this morning, I'm looking at uh, national fire. If there is one, the issue of safety of lives and property. I mean, of lives and property is the number priority of any government. But are we seeing that? Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we shall deal with the issue of personnel equipment, the issue of even insurance for the personnel, among others. But we'll be right back. you for being there. The program is Dialogue, reaching you from the stables of Liberty Television, Voice for All, and Vision for All. And today we are looking at the issue of National Fire Code, prevention of at least safety of lives and property. We all know the responsibility of any government, any responsible government, is protection of lives and property. Not at, we allow situations to happen that in our client, every year, billions of Naira Property worth billions of, 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 of Naira and unquantifiable lives are lost to fire outbreaks that otherwise were preventable. Why are we in this situation? And our guest today is an expert on this field, somebody who is trained between, between Nigeria and even outside the country. This is about Mohammed Lawal Rama. Well, we've laid this foundation of this, but let's even come down to personnel now. Yes. Because I realize we are not even recruiting enough here to go around. Exactly. There is fire outbreak, a fire machine comes, see the driver and another operator. At the end of the day, the two same people that will end up fight, fight, fighting uh, this uh, incident. Mm. Equipment is another thing. Mm. We see some of the equipment sometimes. Yes. I've seen a situation where a firefighting machine had to be pushed <laughs> for it to start. You know? But again, let's come to in terms of personnel. Do, can we say they have enough motivation as it is? The few that we even have available. Let us start by the number of personnel. Okay. You cannot employ new personnel when they don't you don't have places where to, they for come them to work. Mm. That is why I said we must have new fire stations within the major cities in Kaduna State and the local governments. That will give employment to the teeming unemployed youth who will be but you must have those fire stations first in place. Okay. And then the training. You cannot have success in any operation if you do not train the personnel. 
and untrained personnel to perform a duty, mm. you are calling for an accident. An accident waiting to happen. Or waiting to happen. Mm. He must be trained very well. And those on service must be retrained okay. periodically. And the world is going fast. Yeah. Technology is growing. The fire services is a dynamic service in abroad. If you go, you will see that they are up to date. Yeah. We saw the recent fire incident uh, in which country? The mass were being rescued in the Ex forest. Exactly. It's up to date. So there must be training and retraining is very, very essential. Put together with the fire prevention, the water system, the fire science, the legislation, communication, the fire prevention. Those are very, very, very essential. Training and retraining. And, retraining. Mm -hmm. and uh, as it is now, the government may not be able to provide new fire stations okay. within a limited because those fire stations are capital intensive. It takes time. But we can have an ad hoc arrangement. Considering, considering, Consider the, bill, considering the billions we hear governors spend on the so-called security vote and what have you, yes. who, will this be a big deal? We, we can start, we can plan for those fire stations. Mm. But there is urgent need to provide new fire stations. Okay. And what the government must do is, within a designated area where the fire station is to be located, yeah. we can rent an existing Building. Okay, okay, structure there to a use. Tempora, as okay, a te temporary, temporary building. Okay, okay. And house that fire station. Okay. Provide the fire truck mm. and the water tanker and other sundry inputs or implements. Uh, but, but, but we're able to care about this. The few that we have now, I've seen a situation where uh, a firefighting personnel in the process of trying to put out the fire. The, 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 the shoe he was wearing, the sole went off. And when it became an issue, and he said, look, I bought this with my money, it's my personal use. I was not even equipped to do the job I'm doing. Well, this is due to the neglect mm. the services has suffered over the years. Are they given new uniforms? There are other inputs that have limited life that need to be resupplied do they do it like the foam they use to quench fire oh, yeah. okay the dry powder the gas uh, 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 co2 uh, i mean uh, oxygen cylinders okay. they use how often do, do they get supply of them the carbon dioxide ca ca carbon even the carbon dioxide Oxygen. What we normally see is when a government comes in mm. and then there is a cry that the fire services, they will buy a few trucks mm. and give them. Then within the next year two, they run down because mostly corruption comes in. They supply recondition fire yeah. vehicles. Wow. Not brand new fire vehicles. Not brand vehicle. new. And the maintenance culture too. If a fire truck at the fire station here in Kaduna breaks down mm. and it needs to be repaired, they will go, they will go through a whole more road before they get financing to repair emergency vehicle. And maybe there is a mechanic somewhere, a roadside mechanic somewhere, where they normally take their vehicles to them. He may decide to waste his time because there is a backlog of payments, payments. Okay. due to him mm. that have not been, been paid. Cleared. Yeah, but the vehicles in the, in the cover of the governor don't, don't suffer this. They don't. <laughs> they don't. That is why included in the fire service, mm. they must have 
a maintenance culture department. Department, okay. Maintenance department. So they don't need to go out. They don't need to go out. Just like the police, the police used to have. I always give example of Kano. Hmm. They are workshop. Okay. Where their own staff are trained mechanics. Hardly do you see them take their vehicles outside. outside. Except in special circumstances. Okay. Where maybe a, a, an expert from outside mm. needs to come in. So they must have... And even at that, he comes to their own workshop he, to he, attend to... To attend to it. Not them moving out there. Moving out. And, okay. There must be a maintenance department within the fire services. Wow. That brings us to the issue of insurance. Because we know a job as as rescue and fire, there must be insurance. Do we have insurance that we can mean covers for firefighters in Nigeria? I no. I am not aware of it. Okay. But they ought to have it. You were in service for I was I mean. but I was not insured. I'm I'm just imagining well, if I there was well, no insurance. I was working with a I was, I was never insured. Okay. But my last place of employment, I was insured. Okay. You understand? Mm -hmm. Now, you are talking of insurance. Staff whose daily welfare have not been Taking adequately care taken care of, mm -hmm. they get their salary. How, how prompt do they get their salary? How adequate is it? to take care of their families. Hmm. The uniform, the places of work, you can go and see for yourself. Go around and see. Very shabby, untidy. Uh, uh, you they are ill-motivated. We are happy to come to work. The environment itself. Should the environment she must be motivate you to, yeah. to to motivate you. We don't want to go and fight fires. That's not what we want. It must be as a last result. No. But whatever is necessary, let it be done so that we don't even turn out for fires. And eventually if we turn out for fires, we will carry out our job successfully with limited damage. And loss of lives. When we talk about all this, well, as it is, it's 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 good. We all know it. We are all knowing this. Well, like somebody would say that in Nigeria, we always know what to do, or we refuse to do it. It's like I always say, hey, a former governor uh, had an accident on the road, he refused to repair, and somebody said, well, if he had repaired that road, probably the accident wouldn't have happened. And when it happened, he was rushed outside the country. And somebody said, well, if he had been hospital good enough while he was a governor mm. there wouldn't have been need for him mm. uh, but like somebody said uh, he said if you take some vips falling into potholes for certain roads to be repaired may this may they keep into <laughs> oh. the, the 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 public safety mm. or the fire services it's not for any particular sort of people okay including the chickens in your house. No. Savers and property. Those are the two keys. Okay, but a lot of things go into ensuring, ensuring that the safety of life and, and property. property. Well, it is the primary responsibility of every government. Exactly. Which as it is, we don't see them it's, it's act lack actually of, doing. Well, it's it's, it's la la lack of knowledge. Even ignorance on the part Mm. Because you'll find that uh, the executive saddle was well, the ministry saddle was the responsibility of taking care of the fire service may not be well informed. Informed, okay. And they do not normally call for outside professional no. advice. No, we've seen that even within the security cycle. Yes, where certain people are given certain respons the responsibility of security. They don't. To work with, I mean, professionals. They don't. For them and to that succeed. is why when you call them on the radio, in the media, no. when there is an incident, mm -hmm. and they come, they talk, 
a professional outside would easily know that this is God not... God doesn't know what he's talking about. Because anything dealing with lives and property, you must have a professional oh. to take care of it. Not round, just anybody. Round, round peg in a round hole. Yes. Just like any activity that we do, there's a normal procedure of doing it. Okay. Once you overstep any one of the procedures, yeah. you are calling for disaster. Well, you go to places and you see a point is tagged, uh, muster points. Yes. For instance. Yeah. You go to high-rising buildings, not just high-rising buildings, because today I walk into certain religious houses, being it church, being it mosque, mm. where sometimes you have hundreds or thousands mm. of people. Mm. You can't even say there are certain safety measures within that. Now we see people spend millions, if not billions, spending building churches and mosques, but cannot as much have, as have fire extinguisher at strategic location. We make because on your mind, you see something like as um, like well, you I said, hit, you hit uh, yeah, mm -hmm. heat detector. Mm -hmm. We know that if the heat gets to certain places and the alarm rises, yes. we know something is wrong. And yes. what is it? Yes. like that. Yes, you see, it's what I said previously. If the rules are in place, mm -hmm. the regulations are in place, they are not followed, and there is no one responsible. For the enforcement. For the enforcement to ensure that they are being followed to the latter. The safety of lives and property is relegated by the ground. What people see is the economic value of that activity. Mm. But they forget is people who who drive who drive mm. who drive everything. You see? It's like the explosion of the fortnight. The, 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 the yeah, gas. Mm. The, the gas. Who was responsible to responsible of monitoring that type of activity? No. Is that type of activity allowed within, within the population? If it is allowed, is it being well conducted? We're talking about that. Can government actually divorce it from this act? Because one, the guy selling that gas, again, we're meant to understand by Standard Organization of Nigeria, by Department of Petroleum Resources, that it was not even the domestic uh, gas, that it was an indust industrial gas in the first place. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we're also meant to understand that this guy was displaced from wherever he was in the past, conducting his activity. Then, of course, in the name of urban development, the place was demol dem demolished. Mm -hmm. He was not given an alternative. Mm -hmm. If government had moving you from here you to this place, a safe haven, wouldn't that have prevented what we saw? Uh, the happen? whole process from the start to the finish mm -hmm. was not done according to stipulated regulation. If the regulations were followed right from the start, mm -hmm. And his first place was the operate with the we need oil transport anywhere. Yeah. Even when before, if for any reason government needs the place for a development, the government they should will have provided him, him to a proper area. No. But that was not done. And you know what is happening in the country, my language is a lot of activities go have hazard way of um, yes but, but, but again that brings us to this issue I, I i tell people that when you are seated when you are seated in your car especially the passengers are sitting on the tank which contains the foil mm. <laughs> for instance mm. i mean that is danger enough itself but we know there are safety measures put in place that you can comfortably sit the travel kilometers even when the car overheat mm. you don't have a problem mm. Something as simple as a, I mean, a fire is still even within somebody's place of business on daily basis where he earns his money. Sensitization, enlightenment, and education. And for the fire services, there was responsibility of inspection. Yeah. Today, 
we are going to media liberty today to see what do they have in place. Okay. Do they have the right type of fire extinguishers, mm. the right type of fixed installation in their offices outside? When they have that, everything is okay. And then Liberty must have a safety officer. Okay. It's a staff will be designated as a safety as officer. As a safety officer to take care of the safety for that month. Of it the lives be, and property yes, within, the, within the organization. Within, it can be anyone. And all your staff will be trained on first aid, firefighting. Okay. And safety. In case of any emergency. In case of any emergency. Mm. So the fire services, they go around to schools, industries, everywhere. It is their responsibility. Those are incorporated in the statutory requirements of setting up those places. <laughs> Again, we don't see that. That brings us to the issue of handling of such equipment. I, I, I enter my kitchen in my house and I look at the two gas cylinders mm. or at the backyard mm. and a lot of what ifs <laughs> what if we'll come to your yes yeah or oh, I'm driving in my car and mm. I look at my car uh, I open the boot think of the okay yes I know I have a fire extinguisher and what have you but let's even start from the fire extinguisher before mm. we even go to things mm. like gas cylinder yeah we're meant to understand that you have different gas I mean fire extinguishers types. for different uh, uh fires okay yeah, yeah. Mm. you see we have classes fire is fire yeah. but not all fires are alike okay so we have different types of fire we have different types of fire okay but there are three essential elements that are common to the fires okay you have the fuel that will okay okay you must have oxygen to support the burning okay and you must have adequate heat so that the fire can Come start. On. Okay. These three so these three combine. These three. Okay. It's the marriage, so to speak, of these three that makes a fire. Okay. You will never see a fire that presence of these this three, three together. Okay. So the key is to eliminate any one of these of the three. three. Okay. When you eliminate any one of these three, hmm. the fire will be put out. Now, heat, how do you heat it? It's by cooling it. Okay. You pour water. That's where water bring comes the in. Yes, that's where water comes in. To bring the way down so that it will not support the burning. You take away... It's like asphyxiating the fire. Okay. You are and how do you do it? By in or a substance that behaves like a gas, okay. which is heavier than oxygen, that like, can displace the oxygen no, like, away from the fire. Like carbon, mo the carbon monoxide? Carbon monoxide. Okay. Uh, no, carbon dioxide. No, carbon dioxide. Not carbon monoxide. Okay. Because carbon monoxide is... Okay. Yes. Carbon you introduce carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is heavier. So it douses the, the, it, the it oxygen. Displaces, it the displaces oxygen. the oxygen and it takes the place of the oxygen. And carbon dioxide does not support yeah. oxygen. Does. does. And then the other thing is to take away fuel. When you take away the fuel, there won't be any fire. But from your explanation now, my understanding is if a clothing material is burning. Mm -hmm. I will need a different form of uh, fire extinguisher. Normally, from when it is a chemical. That's, that, that's why I told you it's mm. classes. Okay. Class is the material. Material. Okay. Like the articles of clothing, wood, brass, textile, metals, stuff like that. Okay. Those are free burning materials. Mm. You can easily put them down with water. Okay. But class B. Those. A flammable liquids like petrol, PMS. Like petrol. flammable liquids and liquefiable solids. Solids, okay, okay. Like candle wax, okay. Candle wax. When it melts and the temperature 
reaches a it catches fire. So the oil, flammable oils, are liquefiable solids. And then the sea, those are gas. Okay. Gas fires. And then last but not least, metal. Fires involving metals. Metals. Metals do burn. No matter what it is. When you reach the temperature is high enough for it to burn, it will burn. It will burn. So each class that is the right type of fire extinguisher to use. The first one is water. Okay. The second one, you can use foam or dry powder. Okay. okay. Or carbon dioxide to quench. But the risk of using powder on uh, uh, liquids is that you may damage or okay. adulterate the liquid. The liquid. So okay. we recommend carbon dioxide and foam. Foam does two things. It cools because it is liquid, mm. water, and two, it prevents the oxygen from getting to the fire. Okay. If you use water on oil, the water is heavier than oil. It sinks down and then the fire continues to burn. What the, the oil comes yes, out. Yes, and then there is lack of spread of the fire to when you pour water. Water. It may splatter and take the fire elsewhere. Elsewhere. And the other one, the gas fire, you use carbon dioxide or dry powder. So for every fighting equipment, they must have all this in place. It, they must when have. When they go to the and, destination, identify it. Identify what, it. what form of fire it is. Water. To know what to use. Yes. Water, the cylinders are painted red. Okay. Dry powders are painted blue. Okay, okay. Carbon dioxide is black. Wow. Carbon dioxide. And mm. the foam is yellow. Okay. It's yellow. Well, because our time is far spent. In terms of cylinders, because these are some of the most recent, we mm. find this within mm. domestic areas mm. and whatever. How can we actually ensure safety standard for some of Quickly. Yeah. We will start from the buying stage. Okay. You must buy from authorized dealer. Dealer. Who is certified to sell it? And who is certified mm -hmm. to build it? Okay. And then you must check for the company's seal and cap, seal yeah. and the cap yeah. on the cylinder that it is in place, it is not damaged. Yeah. And then you will check the due date for test. Yeah. Because all these gas cylinders, they have expiring date. Expiring date. Manufacturing date expiring date. Yes. Okay. We seem so old, all over the place. They are so old, and then in the house, there must be adequate ventilation. Ventilation. Okay. It shouldn't be a place that is choked. Choked. There must be because there could be leakage. There could be. And anything. you must not leave any flammable liquids or plastics near the gas, gas cylinder, gas cooker. And the gas cylinder, we have to understand, must be kept outside, not yeah, within. It, it, it must be. Okay. It must be left outside. And do not leave your stove unattended. Oh, no. What? Do you, the the yeah. reason is that the cooking may overflow. Yeah. I mean, to put oh, out the fire it's, it's, and the gas will continue to leak. And it is hot, there is fire. Result. We will have love to continue, but you know, <laughs> with a topic like this, like I always say, one hour just seems like 25 minutes. But we have to leave it here. But we'll keep educating Nigerians on what some of these issues are. Again, I reiterate, protection of lives and property is the first responsibility of every government. But as far as the issue of fire, safety is concerned. That seems to be taking the passenger seat for some government, sadly. Today, on the program Dialogue, Mohammed Lowell Rama, an expert on fire, safety, and others. Thank you very much for your time, sir. You are welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. There you are. Thank you for investing your time with us. My colleague, Sheffield Suleiman, will be here tomorrow to take you on on the program. I am Abdul Aziz Ahmed Kader. Have a nice day. Ahead.